standing beside the Montreal Canadian man. All these maple leaf hands, I, I won't say no more, it might throw me out. I, uh, before, uh, before, we, before I pray, I want to ask you to stand, and I want to do this, a moment of silence. A moment of silence before I pray.
Sanchez, graduate of the Stephen Quentin Channel, and Mr. Terry Quentin.
and let me acknowledge and thank you all and continue the good work that you, you are doing. And we thank the Institute, my friends and family, uh, take care and uh, I'm happy to be here today to celebrate this day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice Chief. At this time, I'd like to call upon Chief Advocate Susan. Speak to me. Accomplishment. 
I met up with some kookums and grandpas outside and I said, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna cry because it's, it's emotional for them to see you succeed and to be up here. So congratulations to all the graduates. On behalf of the band, we have gifts here for you, so I won't hand them out individually, um, but they're, they're up here and um, on behalf of our council. And thank you, Councillor Sam Roberts. He's got a graduating son here, uh, Jonas. So congratulations, Councillor Sam, on your son graduating here. We're very, very proud of you. So let's hear it for the graduate graduating class of 2021 for Senator Miles Ben School. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Cook Searson, for your encouraging words. I'd like to call upon this time uh, Acting Director from Central Office, Josie Rowski, and Elder Canadian fan, Roger Rack, once again. Good afternoon to everyone here today, in person, in person and in spirit, to all. Thank you for inviting me to be part of your special ceremonies today. And what a special day it is indeed. Thank you for the prayer, Roger. Thank you to everyone who has been a part of supporting these beautiful graduates to achieve their dreams and goals. It is truly an honor to be here today with you. Thank you to all the other dignitaries for holding space and being here for this special occasion. And especially thank you to all the graduates and their escorts. I'm here today to bring you congratulations from Lacaron Indian Band Education. To each and every one of you on your dedication, determination, and hard work in achieving your success. We are all so proud of you. Your hard work and achievements brought you all here to us today. You are now ready to start a new chapter in life's journey. I cannot imagine how difficult this year has been with COVID the anxiety, the mental health, all the stresses that came with COVID. Yet you preserved, you per I need to buy a bowl. Yet you persevered and continued to pursue your dreams and that is so commendable and admirable. You are living proof of how tough, resourceful and resilient you are as indigenous people. You've completed your grade 12 and through it all, you may have possibly been working through other obstacles in your life that made this journey tougher. But here you sit today amongst your peers, proud and accomplished, representing yourselves. You are the cream of the crop from each of your communities. We all come from different, and for some of us even more difficult, backgrounds, but you have not allowed that to limit your potential or stifle your growth. You persevered and succeeded. You pushed forward to achieve your dreams. You are quite unbreakable. You are quite literally your ancestors' wildest dreams. You are living, breathing proof of the unbreakable will of Indigenous people to succeed and achieve your dreams so that you can move forward in life. Your hard work and dedication it took for you to complete this monumental milestone is so admirable. You stayed up many nights studying working on assignments toward the goal you set for yourselves. And sometimes the extracurricular may have seemed more exciting or even enticing. But you continue to move forward and set your sight on that goal. Again, we are all so proud of your achievements. We sing and dance your names with great pride. We wish you all the very best as you move forward with your, with your new endeavors. Remember, if you have it in you to dream, you have it in you to succeed. And also that you achieve your grade 12 all on your own. You prove that you can be our next leaders so that our people can continue to flourish. As you embark on your new journey, remember that being Indigenous is a time of which many of our youth will look up to and are proud of you, our histories and our culture. One of the things I've learned in my old age, or is it called wisdom, is that what you put into the universe is what you'll get back. And even though you may not reach your dreams in the next few years, never give up. And my own experience is, is a confirmation of that. I quit school when I was in grade nine. I went to grade nine for two years. 
And actually, my teachers told me that I might as well quit because I'll never amount to anything. But I refused to believe it, so I put myself back into school. And I bought my grade 12, and then eventually I went on to work on my degree in education. And here I stand today. So you are all able to, capable of doing that as well. And I had people believe in me, believe in me. And so those people that believe in you, those are the ones you want to gravitate towards. So don't get me wrong, it was a lot of hard work and a lot of late night studying and trying uh, to understand the new content in my studies. But the, and there were many nights that I cried and I wanted to give up, but I didn't. I kept going forward. I was so committed. And so all of you, I wish you all the best in your future, and you can do it. Don't give up. Thank you very much. And again, let's give another cheer for the great for the graduates. Toronto, Toronto Big Police fans are being a hard on me. How many of my truck Canadian fans are with? Oh my goodness, right on. Uh, at least I don't feel alone. One of our, uh, I'm talking to the graduates now. Pretend uh, I, I, I'm your guidance counselor, come to my office. One of the counselors, he was a teacher here. He came to my office yesterday. He came right here, come into my office in education. He said, hi Roger, how are you doing? I said, I'm fine. I said, well, we're going forward. How are things? He said, we're going forward. I said, you come here, young man. I said, I used to be our student here. I used to coach him in hockey. Anyways, he came, have a chair. I said, no, no, he said, I want to show you something. He went to my window, my office window. He said, I want to show you something. Come here, he said. So I went, what are you going to show me? Yeah, there's a band, band officer, the bank. He said, what, what? He said, what are you going to show me? I see your dirty truck. Well, no, I had a, a much truck, an Indian flag that somebody ripped it off. <laughs> Must be this guy over here. <laughs> Anyways, I graduates. I thought about this last night. I didn't know I was going to be here. I was in Prince Albert. I do something for the youth even. And uh, anyways, I was in my bedroom last night. I just said if I knew I, I was going to be called, and uh, I, uh, my, I said, "What am I going to say to the graduates, to all of you, young men, young ladies, with all the potential, with all the, everything that you have within you? You can make it. You've come this far." I've been with student services at Laurent T. Bell for 30, going on 37 years. I have seen many of our band members graduate. I have seen many go on, become teachers, social workers, RCMP, Navy, Navy doctors, nurses, lawyers. But some have fallen along the way. They got caught up in other things. And here's a message. I want to leave with you, give you. I want to encourage every one of you, including Tommy, my good friend Tommy. Every one of you, you're special. As elders, as people, as parents, number one, we're going to be praying for you. We're going to be thinking about you. Number three, the purpose you receive your great job is to go on. We're out there in the horizon. There's so much opportunity for you to get into. Post-secondary, we have all the staff here to help you get where you want to be. In other words, the message is from me to you, to me to go, is to go forward. Go forward. Don't stop. Don't stay idle too long. Yes, celebrate tonight and all that, but go, go forward and become the next teacher, social worker, lawyer, doctor, nurse for La Clarence, Indian Bell. God bless you graduates, thank you very much.
Thank you, Roger. Thank you for your wise words. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call upon counsel from GMB, Mr. Gerald McKenzie. Thank you. First of all, uh, I know I'm going to ask the uh, Roger for the opening uh, prayer. And Yassi, and Chief, thank you for uh, acknowledging Grandma today. Anyway, um, I would like to thank the parents, the guardians, the caregivers, the grandparents that made this happen to our students that are sitting up here. Congratulations. On behalf of Grandmother Lee and our staff, we'd like to say thank you for uh, finishing your grade 12. I just wanted to uh, say a few words. I'm not going to speak very long. Maybe I'll tell a story about Brett, but uh, I don't want to embarrass him too much. But uh, you know that uh, now that you have the, your great hall, I know that's the key to that door that opens everything in front of you. It's the future. And that diploma, like I've heard it before, that's the passport to your life, to your future. Remember that. Passport to your future. I never forget that, because you have it now. Nobody can take it away. Nobody can come and say, look, you don't deserve that diploma. You do, that is yours, you can keep it. And then you make another one out of it. Put beside it, and all something. And one of these days you're gonna sit over there in front of these chairs and be one of the dignitaries, the chief, even the MLA, you know, and those guys make lots of money. Remember, make lots of money, like, Anyway, uh, just a little story, but uh, I want to I want to share with everybody. They want to bear with me and Gordon. You know, uh, Brett used to come over to my house when they were young. He used to play with my daughter Rachel, and then they used to have a lot of fun and swimming all the time. Yes, tiny. I got pictures of them. You know, and uh, they come in. And, my name is Brett. B R T T Brett. That's my name. He is cute. You know. Yeah, now he's got his great glove, he's moving on, he's, he can spell his name now in all, all capital letters. <laughs> and that's all, I, I just wanted to adjust the, uh, the great gloves and, uh, and to congratulate everyone for doing such a fine job to the graduates. And thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, Councilor McKenzie. Moving right along, I'd like to call upon MLA, Mr. Doyle Vermette. Doyle. Thank you. Uh, it's going to determine how long I'm up here. You guys want me up here long, or do you want me to get off quick, off this mic, and let's uh, go party and celebrate? Quick? Okay, depending on how big of a cheer this crowd gives to these grads, it'll determine how long I'm going to be. Let's hear it. Loud. Wow, I guess I'm going to be short, so you're going to have to pay attention. I just want to acknowledge the leadership. I just want to say thank you that are here. The prayer from our elder. To the caregivers, parents that have supported these grads, I want to say thank you. It's an honor to be here, to recognize, and we're here to honor you. That's so important. You have our attention. We're here to support you. I want to thank the staff. You constantly give these young people the support that they need, encouragement. I know it's not easy. You have many struggles in life, but you know what? You've accomplished it. You've had the love, the support of family, of staff, of everyone. It's not easy, but you will move on in your future. We wish you all the best. We have nothing but love and respect for you. We wish you the best in life, but you will have to make some decisions on your journey, what path you choose. We will always be praying and hoping the best for you. Your future is bright. You have such opportunities. I'm just gonna say one last thing to everyone. Let's give them one last congratulations and thank them for the hard work they have done. Give them a hand, you guys. Thank you. As you party, celebrate, whatever you wanna call it, please take care of one another, be safe, and we wanna see you have a bright future. Thank you.
Thank you, Dua. Before I call upon our next speaker, I would just like to say, uh, Mr. Whiteman, unfortunately, could not be here, our school principal. He has fallen ill, and he sends his congratulations to the class. And also, I'd like to acknowledge the entire staff. We had planned to hold this outdoors today, then we started looking at the forecast, we weren't really sure, and we had made all the preparations to have it outdoors. But at the last minute, we decided to have it indoors, and I just want to thank, and we should give a round of applause to the entire staff uh, for putting this all together in record time uh, today. So please give them a round of applause. Okay, to give the uh, administration address, since Mr. Whiteman cannot be here, I'm going to ask Michelle McCollum, our VP here at the school, to give the uh, SFBS administration address. And she will do that from the podium. Hello, everyone. I just want to welcome everybody to our school, all our graduates, our family and friend here today, the chief and counselors, and our elders who have come to help celebrate this special day with us. Um, this is always my favorite day of school. I always look forward to this day, and I Missed two grads in a row, so I'm really happy to be here today with you guys and watch you get your diplomas and everything. I'm so excited. Um, this amazing young group, group of young adults have maintained their dedication to school and on being here today. That's one thing they're really, really good at is showing up. And when you show up, that's when you get things done, right? You just have to show up and do hard work and you get what you, you're dreaming about. So I commend you for staying on course, working hard and making every day count towards your journey to graduate from high school this year. We have staff has, have watched you grow and mature into outstanding young adults. I wish you nothing but good things in the future and I know you will do great things in life. You have made us so proud. I know your families and your friends are proud of your special achievement as well. This is just one stepping stone in your life. Um, Senator Miles Brent School Administration Team, Mr. Hennigue, Mr. Whiteman, and myself wish you all the best in the future and have a fun and safe evening. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you, Ms. McCollum. Councillor Devin Bernaches uh, sends his regrets that he would not be able to make it, but he sends his congratulations to the class of 2021. I just want to share a story about Mr. Roger Ratt um, with with everybody. He's been uh, jabbing at my maple leaves. Well, he has an office at Central Office, and I used to go walk into his office, and I couldn't figure out why I used to get nauseous and kind of sick every time I went into his office. I didn't really pay attention, and pretty soon I would just stand at his door, but I could still feel a little bit of nauseous coming on, a little bit of cold. So I walked in there one day and I started looking around and gee, I noticed all his walls are painted in Montreal Canadians colors and he has the logo in the middle of the wall. Now it dawned on me, that's why I'm getting nauseous walking into his office. But before we call up the Valley Victorian, I want to say my congratulations to you all. I've watched you grow for six years now. <laughs> And about 200 of these gray hairs are caused by certain members of you. Oh, they see. <laughs> they know who they are. But they all make me so proud. I love you guys, and I wish nothing but the best for you in the future. So with that, before I get choked up, I'm going to call upon our valedictorian, Miss Celine Charles. I wrote a note, well, a list, so I'm going to read it. 
You guys ready? Eggs, bacon, cheese. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> because now more than ever, we're in a tumultuous time, so take these words with you, even if they're just rhymes. This past year, we've witnessed history created, elections, protests, pandemics permitted. A time that is supposed to be filled with such glee, because after 12 years, we're finally free. So, after so many long, stressful nights and working days and struggling to wake up the next morning for school is pretty hard. And after realizing that it was so close, gave me hope. And I'd like to give thanks to the staff and everybody in the school and who took their time to come here. Thank you for making this happen and for us. Thank you, Celine. Okay, at this time, I'd like to call upon Mr. Virgil Baird to do a tribute to the staff. Virgil? Uh, hello, my name is Virgil Baird, and uh, I uh, have something to say to the staff members of Senator Miles Van School. Uh, just give me a brief moment, please. Welcome to all our friends and family gathered here today. <clears throat> the great teachers are precious gifts in students' lives, and we are lucky to be blessed that we have so many amazing teachers behind us. I am standing here holding this diploma. Well, I don't have it right now. <laughs> but, uh, because, yeah, I don't know, it says, like, you never let me, you never, <laughs> you never let me give up when I badly want to. Oh, <laughs> I want to say thank you on behalf of our graduation class for all that our teachers and staff have done for us over the years. We really appreciate it all. We love you and support you. I really thank you guys, Tinike, and like I'm just really happy for all of this and everything. Thank you guys so much. Okay. I'd like to call upon staff member Josie Forrest to do the staff tribute to the graduates. Can you see me? <laughs> I'm a little short here. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Josephine Forrest, Ms. Vigason. Welcome to this most important day. I am honored to have been asked to do the tribute to the grads. As we all know, this year has been an incredibly difficult year for all. Today we honor and celebrate the achievements of a group of incredible young people. The graduates you see before you have made it through one of the most challenging school years in recent times. And there are so many qualities within each of you graduates that we as teachers have come to admire. Each day, our supervision teams eagerly wait for the buses to greet and welcome our students. And I want you to know that each day that you have arrived at school, you have taught us something. Through you, we have been honored to learn about pride, courage, determination, and resiliency. By showing up every day, you honor our ancestors. The pride you show in being here today is a powerful message to our colonizers that you are not giving up and that you will do what it takes to make a world that holds space for Indigenous voices. As many of us are residential school survivors, I see some of my former classmates out there as well and I see their children graduating. And I want you to know that your presence here has given us the strength to continue the decolonization of our educational systems and to ensure future graduates are taught in a way that reflects and preserves our woodland pre-culture. We are still here, as the saying goes. I encourage you to continue to be proud to be Indigenous. 
Continue seeking knowledge. Help one another, as our elders say. In closing, I say in an estimate to our students, thank you for being a part of our lives. As you go into your next journey, we hope that you continue to carry the strength of our ancestors. Have a wonderful day with your families and your friends. And remember, never stop being deadly. <laughs> Congratulations! Awesome speech, thank you, Josie. Tribute to family by Miss Christy Bird. Christy? coming to celebrate with us today. As we celebrate our graduation, the biggest reward to me is having our friends and family with us today. We appreciate all the love and support throughout the years. It has been a journey of both hard work and struggles, but it has also been a fun and amazing adventure. So to our families, thank you for everything. Thank you for the sacrifices that you've had to make in order for us to get through school. Thank you for everything you have done to help us get to this point in our lives. It is appreciated. Thank you, Christy. This brings us to our Eagle Feather presentation. So I call upon John and Alvina Halkett.
soldiers there are stuck. Keisha Bell. Tommy Bell. Christy Bird. Christina Clinton Charles. Miss Boyette Charles. Nicole Moraski.
Daniel Moran. Jonas Roberts. Sonny Roberts. Timothy Todd. Thank you, John and Albina, Mr. and Mrs. Halkett, our elders. We appreciate the gifts of the Eagle Feathers for our graduates. So how grad works now because of COVID guidelines and stuff, we have all of your diplomas and your plaques you won for awards for different subjects in one gift bag. So that we'll hand everything to you just because of the guidelines we can't be touching and passing of things between us. So just so you guys understand and everybody understands why we're just giving you a gift bag. All your stuff is in there, your diploma, your awards, and gifts. Alrighty. As we call the names, we'll get a staff member to pass them to Mr. Henneke and then he'll present you with your diplomas in the bag. We got a rowdy bunch here, people. The purple one. Oh no, yeah. 
you correct the white one, sorry. So the first one is Mr. Virgil Bear, grade 12 graduate. Yeah, move your castle to the other side. Now you're graduating. Keisha Bell, grade 12 graduate.
Marilyn Roberts, grade 12 graduate. Simone Ross, grade 12 graduate. <laughs> Timothy Todd, grade 12 graduate. Officially graduated. Congratulations, class of 2021. Uh, the rose ceremony, if you look at your program, they'll be handed out later by the graduates and because of guidelines. And once again, congratulations. Be safe tonight. And we're all going to miss you. Okay? Okay. I'd like to ask Roger up one more time to say the closing prayer. Thank you everybody for coming, safe travels.